Joining us now to talk Scotland and Canada, Lena Wilson. She is the CEO of something called Scottish Enterprise, and we welcome you to these shores. Nice Thank to have you, you in much. Canada. It's great to be here. Well, let's start with that. What is Scottish Enterprise? Scottish Enterprise is Scotland's national economic development agency. We're largely government funded, but we raise a lot of our own private revenue also. And our role is to continue the transformation of the Scottish economy and make sure that we've got a, as much investment and jobs happening uh, for the people of Scotland as possible. All we hear over here about over there is that everybody's economy is terrible, maybe with the exception of the Germans. So how's Scotland doing economically right now? I'd say Scotland is very optimistic in what are challenging times. We've actually been bucking the trend for the UK. So we've been seeing unemployment following, uh, following and uh, last year we saw uh, uh, employment actually rising in Scotland, which is very, very welcome. So we're focusing on the key sectors and industries and companies that are going to keep growing. And it's that growth that I think is the characteristic of the Scottish economy and our ambitions. What's the unemployment rate right now? The employment rate in Scotland is just about 7.5, between 7.5 and 8%. Uh, depending on some regions you go to, for example, the northeast of Scotland and Aberdeen, it's extremely low because of oil and gas. Hmm. And as with other uh, countries throughout the world, we've got some pockets of higher unemployment. And the key sectors that you say you want to continue to focus on are what? The key sectors are energy. Uh, so we've got a strong uh, tradition in oil and gas, but also now renewable energy, uh, which is very important for Scotland. Uh, financial services, uh, tourism, um, food and drink. As you know, our whiskey exports are, are famous uh, throughout the world. You guys and do whiskey? I hadn't... Uh wasn't aware of that. Yes, we do, and it's enjoyed everywhere, <laughs> uh, e even in Canada. Yes, so I those sectors true. where there's disproportionate global growth and where there's a real Scottish advantage, so even sectors like uh, aerospace and engineering and, and chemicals industries, life sciences, uh, very important for uh, Scotland, Dolly the Sheep genetics, all very important. Let me read you an excerpt that was in the Telegraph back in August and get you to comment on this. Douglas McWilliams, the chief executive of the think tank Center for Economics and Business Research, and himself a Scot, said that Scotland lacks entrepreneurship, misspends money, and suffers from too much government intervention. The country's slow growth means that in less than 20 years, it will have the same living standards as Korea, Poland, and Turkey, which are rapidly catching up with Scotland. The result is that the country will be, quote, merely a third world tourist destination by 2030, said Mr. McWilliams. What do you think of that? Well, I'm very happy to report that uh, that is an opinion and not fact. And in this job, I get very used to people giving their opinion, not often grounded in evidence. Where is he wrong? Well, he's wrong uh, to say that uh, Scotland is not forging ahead as a modern economy. Uh, Scotland outside London secured most foreign direct investment into the UK. We got 22% of all of the R&D investment. We produced 1% of the world's global R&D uh, research. Uh, we topped a billion uh, pounds, so one and a half uh, billion Canadian dollars in our food revenues last year. Uh, we have uh, companies trading all over the world and our entrepreneurship uh, levels are about the rest of the UK. But undoubtedly, my goal and the goal of my organisation is to grow more of those businesses, to get more of them internationally oriented and to capitalise on that. But Scotland is doing very well, is very ambitious, we're very realistic about our prospects and it's about focusing on growth. So that's, that's an opinion but not a valid one. Well, it's an opinion but it's in the Telegraph which means lots of people read it. Does that complicate your job? Well, they do, but uh, for example, I had a lunch with some of the senior editors of newspapers in Scotland on Friday. I'm less concerned with what people think of my agency, uh, and they're entirely positive about it now, but I'm very concerned that we get a level of economic debate going. So I think articles like this are very good because they allow me to rebuff it, to refute it, to bring evidence to the fore. And, you know, as a trained, uh, you know, economist, I'm very, very evidence-based with a strong business head. Well, speaking of The Economist, let me quote The Economist, which published a poll back on September 17th that showed about 40% support for Scottish independence, just a tad above those who opposed it. This is not a, an issue that we are unfamiliar with in Canada since we go through this every decade or so. What's Scottish Enterprise's view on Scotland's independence? Well, first of all, if I can just comment on The Economist, The Economist also said recently in an article that Scotland was going to be, in Glasgow in particular, was going to be the global centre for green energy. So The Economist writes very nice things about uh, Scotland, which I'm very glad about. On the subject of independence, um, I'm the chief executive of our, of our public agency, so, so my job is to be apolitical. I, um, I work for the government of the day, and I do that with pride, but I'm not paid to have a political view on independence. 
Um, my main aim is that the government of the day understand how people feel about it, how businesses feel about it, in order that we can make informed decisions about how the economy goes forward. And how do they feel about it? Um, businesses, well, I, I, I think, as I said earlier, we're seeing outside London the highest proportion of foreign direct investment so they're not spooked coming by in. They're not. We had a record year last year, 9,000 new jobs created for foreign investment, a huge amount of them very high in R&D, higher than the UK average, uh, and our pipeline is very, very strong, particularly in renewables energy. We've had hundreds of millions of pounds worth of investment by global companies from, um, you know, uh, from Korea, from Japan coming to Scotland, and our pipeline is very strong. So, but is it is it more difficult to get people to make those investments in Scotland that you would like to see in the size that you would perhaps like to see it, if all of this talk about in potential independence is in the air all the time? There's a tremendous amount of stability in Scotland. Actually, in the rest of the UK, we've seen a lot of change. We've seen the regional development agencies no longer exist in the rest of the UK. So actually, what I'm seeing is companies say there's a tremendous amount of support in Scotland with Scottish Enterprise and with Scottish Development International. We get our arms around those companies and we can offer them certainty. Our government has just been re-elected for the next five years. Their number one focus, their number one agenda for our country is the economy and doing everything they can to transform it. We have an extremely pro-business First Minister and Cabinet and their uh, business ratings are actually very high so my message to investors is that we want you in Scotland, uh, you'll be in very fine company and that you know, we'll do everything we can to make sure you're a success. Well, let's talk about your country and my country because um, when we talk about various ethni ethnicities that make up Canada and there's probably almost, well there's probably hundreds of them, we tend not to think of Scotland anymore even though our first Prime Minister was a Scot. So tell me, five million Canadians have Scottish heritage right now. What, what does that potentially represent as far as you're concerned? Actually, now I believe it's 5.6 million. 5.6? Uh, uh, didn't mean to shortchange you. Amazing to me that two million of uh, those are in Ontario. So hmm. it's great to be here. If, that's an opportunity for, first of all, um, ancestral tourism, for people to research their family, to come back to Scotland. We had a wonderful year of homecoming a couple of years ago in a gathering of the clans and uh, I believe many Canadians came to that. I came in my direct flight from Glasgow yesterday and it was just a joy for me to hear how many Canadians had such a wonderful time uh, in the Highlands of Scotland and in Edinburgh and Glasgow. So every single interaction is a great opportunity for tourism. We've got many leading uh, Scots and people with Scots ancestry in Canadian business and I'll be meeting some of them and uh, getting to know them and seeing how they can open doors for us. Um, so from a business, cultural, and tourism perspective, um, if I could find a way to reach all 5.6 million, I'd certainly be doing it. Uh, I think you're on the way, just doing this interview right here. But do people, you know, we'd like to think over here that all of you folks back over there know that our first prime minister was actually, a, he wasn't English, he wasn't French, he was a Scotsman, Johnny MacDonald. Do you think anybody knows that over there? I think there's a huge interest in Canada, in Scotland. They may not know about the first Prime Minister. In fact, it wasn't just the first, it was many following That's that. That's true too, uh, So yes. a whole stream. Um, and I, I think that uh, with technology and the internet and everything we have now, there, there's a way to actually develop that. Um, but I think there's a huge affinity for Canada um, with Scottish people. And uh, the other side of the airplane that I came was full of Scots coming to visit their families in Canada. Mm. Uh, and I know myself in my own circles how many people have uh, Canadian uh, uh, links. So there is, there's a very, very strong affinity which I think we can, we can build on. Which companies of yours are doing the most business over here? There are about 40 Scottish companies with a presence in Canada and last year, uh, over the last couple of years, we helped another 50 come out and do business in Canada. So we've got the major financial institutions, the Lloyds Banking Group, Bank of Scotland headquartered um, out, of, um, out of Edinburgh. We've got, not surprisingly, lots of food and drink companies. Um, we've got the whiskey companies, Baxter's, find Scottish uh, food, uh, um, are, are have Baxter's Canada. So a lot of food and drink. Um, we've got some links in the renewable sector and energy sector. 
and financial services. And what we want to do is, is deepen those links. And how do you, yeah, how do, you do that? How do, how do you actually help those businesses do business over here? Well, first of all, we build awareness about the Canadian market in Scotland. So what, what it's like doing business out here, which is easy. Um, the cultural affinities, um, a lot of similarities in how we go about our business. Very similar ambitions. I was with the Ontario government this morning talking about tourism and energy, for example, and there's lots that we can share there. And then we work with those businesses intensively with um, are they ready to export? What kind of licenses will they need? Very practical help. Sometimes we give them financial help to come out to the country uh, to do some um, conferences, trade events. Um, I'm speaking at the Cybos conference later on this afternoon. Uh, and I met a Scottish company on the plane sitting beside hmm. me who were coming out to this very conference. So building that capability and building that capacity, lots of very, very practical help in addition to the market help. And what about Canadian businesses that are doing business over in Scotland? Who are the biggies? Well, we've got a, 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 a huge amount of Canadian companies. I think 70% of our um, you know, oil, oil and gas in, in the North Sea owned by Canadian uh, companies. Is that um, right? 70%? Yes, 70% of the, the fields uh, owned by Canadian companies. Uh, We've got um, companies like Norboard, uh, who have two facilities in Scotland. Uh, we've got Nexon on the on the um, on the energy side as well. So lots of energy related and engineering companies. Um, we've got um, aerospace companies, Vector Aerospace, who invest in Scotland also. So tying in with Scotland's strengths uh, and capability. Gotcha. What about? Uh, I know you said earlier you're very much on the cutting edge of the green revolution in the world right now and I know this province Ontario likes to think of itself as uh, having made a, a big investment in green power as well are there potential linkages there I think there are a really um, great opportunity for linkages I was very impressed with the, the Green Energy Bill and what's happened in terms of that from the Ontario government. Uh, so this morning we talked about uh, the opportunities for smart metering, how we can get better grid connections. I understand there are many tens of thousands of micro-generation uh, projects in Ontario and connection to the grid is a real issue. We've got some leading edge technology and development in Scotland on smart grid, grid connections. We have a quarter, 25% of Europe's wind resource in Scotland. Mm. So we've made big strides in offshore wind. We've got Europe's largest offshore wind farm in Scotland. And I know that uh, onshore wind has been very important here. Um, maybe we can't learn so much about the solar. Maybe our climate in Scotland uh, isn't, right. uh, isn't ready for that. But there's lots on the shared technology platforms. We've also done a great deal to help the Scottish business base and company base transfer over to the opportunities of a low carbon uh, Scotland and we were talking about some of that today too so I think lots of scope for collaboration. What do you think the biggest challenge is right now? I mean there's so much economic instability around the world. How do you get people, how do you encourage people um, to do business in what is admittedly a very small, you want to call it a country, at this time? Well, for Scotland, um, our, our, you know, the, the, the main avenue for that is to think not just Scotland. So all of our strategy is about Scotland internationalising, about Scotland looking to the world. That's why I'm here. I'm not going to lead efforts to transform the Scottish economy sitting in Glasgow. So uh, I'm all over Scotland all the time and I spend a great deal of time with my colleagues all over the world. We have 22 offices all over the world. We can do a great degree of hand-holding. You, you had a good time in Nigeria from what I hear. Yes, well, I was with the World Bank. I've, I've worked in Nigeria and lots of developing countries. And actually, that's been... I was been... kidding. You almost got killed there, didn't you? Well, I, I, I'm still alive. You're still alive. alive. to tell the tale. But, but you know, ride. these scars are the things that spur us on. And uh, I feel very privileged to live in a country like Scotland and realise what's happening throughout the world. So, you know, I think I've been called the, the chief uh, business cheerleader for Scotland. And, you know, I'm very proud. I've got the best job in Scotland <laughs> uh, and get to promote the company, uh, the country. But seriously, on the company front, it's really important to provide as many role models as possible. In any country throughout the world, companies generally think it's harder to do business internationally than it is. And when they see other companies like them doing it, they think, well, I can do this too. So it's, it's bringing those role models, bringing the level of ambition and showing companies how they can do it. And, um, you know, we have very ambitious export targets and we intend to do everything we can to support companies to do that. I'm sure when they hear that accent, they are just putty in your hands. That's such a gorgeous accent. Well, everybody talks like me in Scotland, so it's not that gorgeous. <laughs> but uh, I think we use whatever means we can to you know, distinguish ourselves. And we're knowing as, as being friendly and uh, internationally oriented and business savvy throughout the world. So if the accent helps that, then I'm very happy to keep using it.
Lena Wilson, CEO, Scottish Enterprise, good of you to visit us at TBO tonight. Thanks My so much. My pleasure. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.